Hello, my name is Shane McKay. I'm a physical therapist and first aid instructor. I teach CFR and FAR first aid responder training. Today I'm just going to quickly go through with you how to treat somebody who may have a suspected case of COVID-19 in the workplace. There's now a new protocol procedure in place where you have to put on a gown, mask, gloves, etc. to treat, to treat that person. And I'm going to go through it for you now. Okay, so we have a patient that's sick in our company and as the first aider now we're going to treat that person. We have to take it that this is a suspected COVID-19 case and it, it may not be. It could be a million different things, but we're going to consider that it is. So we should have a protocol in place how to treat the person. The first thing you need is you need a designated room that you're going to bring that person to. It should have windows and it should, have, um, it should be airy, well filtered. Um, you're going to have to provide that person with a mask and tissues. First thing you're going to do after bringing them into the room, obviously keeping a two meter distance, is you're going to have to don your equipment. The first so thing we're going to need is a gown, and this is what we're going to put on force first. So what we need is a, a long sleeve uh, gown, pop it on like this. Now, this one is a tie on one. Some come with a button up, but the problem with the button ups is you need somebody to button it up for you, and you could be on your own. So, I would probably go um, for something like this. Okay, so now I have this on. So, the next thing I'm going to put on is my mask. Okay, so what you want is an FB2 or FB3. This is just an ordinary mask because I'm waiting on them, they're uh, in short supply. Um, but an FB2 and FB3 is a more surgical type mask is what you need. So there's a little bit here that kind of bridges around the nose, a metal bar, so you're gonna put that on, put it around my ears first. And then I've got to squeeze on like this, okay. So then glasses, they go on next, protect my eyes from droplets. Then our gloves. So these are nitrile gloves, you, you can use uh, powerless, you can use whatever you want, as long as they protect you. Okay, so now I've got all my equipment on, I'm going to treat my patient, and once again, this patient has been removed from wherever they were feeling sick, keeping a two meter distance in mind. I will provide them with tissues, I will provide them with a mask, I will then go through a screening process asking them how they got sick, um, when did they start to feel sick. I should point out as well, if anybody's feeling unsick in the morning before they uh, are coming to work, they shouldn't come into work, full stop. Night before, do not come into work. That is the protocol now in the workplace. But this is a case where somebody's just suddenly felt sick and you have to take it that it possibly could be COVID-19, not necessarily. So after going through the screening process with them, I'm gonna treat the person for whatever it may be, okay? Um, even if it's a cut finger, I'm still gonna take this process because we just don't know, we're getting close to the person, so that's the, that's the issue. Once you've done that, uh, once I've got all my equipment on, I then need to get rid of uh, all the equipment. Now, I would only get rid of all of this once the person has no longer needs any more treatment and that they've been removed from the building. With regard to removal, it will be case if the person is driven in on their own and they're able, to they're able to drive out and they're well enough to do so, then they might get back into their own car. If they're on public transport, if that's the way they came in to work, etc., they will not be using that. They will either use a taxi or if they deteriorate, they will use something, an ambulance will be called for them. So now the next part is to actually get rid of all this equipment. So what I'm gonna do is, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the gloves. So what we do is we pull them down like this, sort of halfway, like so. And then what I can do is I can grab the other bit like this. So it's turned inside out now and I can pull that there. So I'm putting them into a black bag. Now, if you don't have a black bag, some places will have um, a yellow, hazardous bin for hazardous waste. A lot of companies wouldn't have that. So use a black bag 
I'll put all this, all this equipment in here, but what I'll do is I'll bag it again with another black bag and keep it for 72 hours and then dispose it as normal. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, after removing those gloves, I'm going to clean my hands again. Try and get all your fingers or your thumbs. Just to be safe, to be safe. Now, I've done another pair of gloves. Let's take the rest of the equipment off. This is how we have to do it. Tear this one off like so. Glasses, mask, gloves off again. I've got to do my hands again. What I can do is after this, I'll go in and wash my hands thoroughly then as well. So now I have everything in the bag here. And what I'll do is I'm going to put another bag around this and I'll, I'll tie it up again. This then is left for 72 hours and then can be disposed of as normal. As I said, if you've got a yellow hazardous waste bin, you can use that, a lot of companies wouldn't have that. So that's donning and doffing um, in the case